So I could be doing schoolwork right now, which I really should be doing, but I decided I wanted to figure out who I'm going to vote for on November 6th. And after some time, I figured out what districts I'm in, and then I looked up the people who are available to vote for in Tennessee Congressional District 3. These are the three options we have. Chuck Fleischman, who has not responded to any of the questions here, so I had to find his website. Daniel Mitchell, who obviously did this stuff because she had to, because she's a Democrat and she's probably not going to win in this district. And then Rick Tyler, who is the independent person who also didn't answer questions. Rick Tyler is an independent candidate whose website looks like this. Just a giant scrolling wall of text. It's boring, but it's not necessarily bad. What is funny is when you start reading about his positions. Whereas Mitchell is your general liberal democratic candidate who has positions that match that side of the aisle with a couple flavorings of good old southern charm and values, and Fleischman is your typical right-wing candidate that has a little more empathy in his healthcare and energy policies, Rick is what we would call a crazy person. Rick is an independent candidate, which is one of the reasons why his website looks so boring. I can tell that he didn't really put much effort into it. For all I know, he could be doing more door-to-door -door stuff than standing on a street corner preaching at people. But if you start reading his positions from the top, you get some pretty basic stuff. You have gun rights, of course. He wants to keep the Second Amendment completely intact. Abortion, yep, that's a good old Southern way of thinking. Uh, Constitution, yeah, it's important. Income tax, it's an odious and oppressive tax that comes straight from the words of the Communist Manifesto, which advocates for a heavy graduated progressive income tax in its second plank. Also, called the IRS Gestapo, using Gestapo tactics. I'd consider that a little bit much. But wait, there's more. So you keep going, and he talks about how the Federal Reserve was set up in 1913 via a secretive criminal conspiracy hatched at Jekyll Island, Georgia. I don't know if that's true. It sounds like it'd be a cool movie, but I feel like it's conspiracy theory stuff. Under that, he talks about government schools, saying that they have failed miserably in the education of our nation's children. So I'm thinking, okay, he's going to advocate for charter schools or mainly private schools. No, he goes down to saying homeschooling and private Christian education need to supplant and challenge the hegemony of corrupt and subversive state education. Which is like a second option of indoctrination. Like, if you think that your kids are being indoctrinated through state education, would you consider it also a, a kind of indoctrination if you say that you have to supplant all of that with exclusively Christian education? Like, I'm for Christian education, I just don't think we should make everyone else for it, too. So now I'm thinking he just sounds like all of my old homeschool friends' parents, which I'm kind of okay with. I know he's not gonna win, so it's not very interesting. What does break the mold, however, is his opinion on the war on terror. So if you saw someone with the connections to all of these different little organizations, apparently, you'd think he'd say something along the lines of, the war on terror is good because we gotta fight off them dare Muslims. Oh no no no. Rick breaks the mold here. Our open southern border belies the fact that the supposed war on terror is a sham designed to preoccupy the public with make-believe enemies and boogeymen. This phony war has been utilized to gut the Constitution and to prepare the United States for disastrous entry into the utopian New World Order. Now his opinion on the Patriot Act 1 and 2, I can get behind a little bit. I'm going to skip the next part, we're going to get back to that, it's the funniest thing so far. Then he talks about the Council on Foreign Relations, which I didn't know existed, but he calls it a treasonous and subversive organization that needs to be investigated for exercising unlawful and subversive control over the American nation. I didn't... just... why... why haven't I heard about this? So we move on to his opinions on the Department of Homeland Security. 
He says that like the Patriot Act, the Department of Homeland Security's unprecedented consolidation of powers increases and magnifies the power of the police state over citizens who still think they are free. It must be abolished. Really? Does, does it need to be? All of these are kind of things that I could understand if someone I knew believed. I probably wouldn't fight them very hard on any of them, because honestly, I don't know as much as they do, most likely. But then we get to the part that I skipped over before. Strap in. War on Terror, Patriot Act, Department of Homeland Security, 9-11. Rick Tyler says... The official explanation of what transpired on 9-11 is fraught with inconsistencies and contradictions. A new, thorough, and genuinely independent investigation into this hideous crime is long overdue. Rick Tyler is a 9-11 truther. And I think that's funny. Oh, also, he's racist. Immigration. A permanent European-American majority must be galvanized to ensure the nation's well-being and survival. He says we have to terminate policies that subsidize minority birth rates and encourage the escalation of European and Caucasian immigration from such countries as former Rhodesia and South Africa in the largest possible numbers. You know, I wonder if his web editor decided to remove the sections about our laws on witch burning and lynch mobs. <sighs> this shouldn't be funny, but it really is. All right, let's stick with the racist part of this because I honestly didn't recognize that till I started recording this. He has a link to a little section called An Intelligent Conversation About Race. Also, Tennessee Secession Now and Beyond Infowars. I'll read those in a second. But on this little section, he has a bunch of audio podcasts that I assume he recorded with such names as White Genocide, The Browning of America, uh, White Fright, White Flight, um, The Africanization of America, uh, t -t White Peril, White Peril Part 2, uh, with some other ones. I, I really should do enough research to like listen to these and see what he's trying to say, but Dad, come, do I already feel like I know what it's going to be? Moving to Beyond Infowars, right here, this little section down here at the bottom, very last thing. He talks about the show Infowars, the infamous podcast or whatever it is that was on YouTube and was recently taken down, I don't know if it's back up, uh, headlined by Alex Jones, noted frog expert. Um, get the meme. So, this little article starts off with talking about how great Alex Jones is and his defense of the Trump campaign. Uh, so he's just, he's just a big fan of our friend Jonesy boy. But then there's a little section called Questions Abound right here. Despite all the obvious good that is synonymous with Alex Jones and Infowars, there remain a great many causes for concern and suspicion. <sighs> In a very real way, for a superficial standpoint of evaluation, Jones, Infowars, and the Trump ascendancy are too good to be true. Among the matters of interest are the very origin of Alex Jones, his proximity and connection to the shadowy Stratford Institute, don't know what that is, and his telltale unwillingness to deal accurately and forthrightly with issues pertaining to the volatile yet ultra-consequential subjects of race and the Jewish Zionist question. Was there a Jewish Zionist question? Because I don't remember that in high school. Some of the other sites. We'll start with the kind of least offensive one. It's called Wall Builders. They're about a section does this when you move around the, the word about us. I think that's kind of funny. They seem relatively inoffensive. Though on their homepage, they have articles about why uh, Christopher Columbus was like a chill bro, apparently. Um, uh, no Noble Savage. It sounds like a kind of weird title. The next one is called Cambria Will Not Yield, which is just a WordPress blog. Um, the About section is a poem, so I had trouble trying to figure out what they do. 
So I checked one of their more recent posts. This is the first paragraph, I'll be quick. When I got involved in what was called the pro-life movement in my mid-20s, I thought that abortion was the issue that trumped all other issues. I was wrong. Legalized abortion is the result of the abortion of the white race from the mystical body of Christ. That is the issue that trumps all other issues. So long as the first abortion remains the institutionalized faith of the European people, such atrocities as legalized abortion and such blasphemies as Negro worship and legalized sodomy will remain part of the fabric of our Western uncivilization. I've never heard of Negro worship. What? I'm not gonna have a full condemnation of these places. I feel like I could, but I would want to spend time building up evidence to make a case for that, and I don't feel like doing that right now. This next one, though, is hilarious in how surface level it appears to be. Here's the first line. Bro Nathaniel, Judaism has its consequences. Which, like, sounds like a Wu-Tang lyric, right? Right below that is this little uh, quote in an image. Some may call it communism, but I just call it what it is. Judaism. Oh boy. Those are some of the websites that are on his little linked website pertinent thing page. Other ones include a guy named Laird Wilcox, which I thought was kind of uninteresting. Um, I clicked on American Renaissance because it sounded interesting. The problem is my web content filter won't allow me to access it. You know why? Hate and discrimination. Oh, by the way, that Bro Nathaniel site, henrymacau.com, exposing feminism and the new world order. Y'all have reached the end. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to try and be brief, okay? Tennessee secession now. I get it. States' rights are important to you. They are to a lot of Southerners. But this one has headlines. I haven't actually read the article because it's a million words long. But headlines here include a possible remedy within the Constitution. Uh, I assume for problems they mentioned up here. Secession. The only real solution. And will the iron fist of tyranny come crashing down again? I assume they're talking about the Civil War when they're talking about tyranny. And in their final section, he mentions why shouldn't Tennessee be the first thing to secede. He has three points. Points two and three are kind of boring. The second one is just Tennessee has a rich history of being the volunteer state, so they're known for sacrifice. Yeah, 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 yeah. The third one is saying that we are the native soil of people like Davy Crockett and Stonewall Jackson. Uh, okay, I guess that works in some way because we've got those people in our history books. Now, the first one says, Among conservative southern states, Tennessee retains the highest percentage of Caucasian representation in its population base. It is upon this mountain of evidence that I establish my final conclusion. This man is a conspiracy theorist who is advocating for a white ethnostate. So I'm not going to vote for him. Bonus content, if you care. I don't know how I didn't see this, but there's a little section here called Nationalist Voices from the Past. The first article it has is just a giant poem called The Saddest Story Ever Told. The first lines are, When a white girl marries a negro, her son of life goes down, and glaring spots of sin appear on her white wedding gown. Holy crap. Also, even more glaring. Make America White Again. This is at the top of every stack on every one of his pages. It links to this. It's a broadcast network for making America white again. If you are in or around the Chattanooga area voting on November 6th, don't vote for Rick Tyler. He has uh, two posts under the category of MLK fraud. The big one is called Martin Luther King, 
Sainter Sinner. He has Lee Harvey Oswald, King Assassination Patsy. Apparently, he was groomed by a guy he knew as Raoul. Uh, I'm going to finish reading this, probably. It's a bunch of stuff. Um, by the way, Robert E. Lee, a genuine American hero. Down here are some comments. This dude. Greetings, beloved brother in truth. Please let me know if I, how I can help you in your noble pursuit of liberty. Click on his account. Where do we go? Open DNS. Hate discrimination. Breezing through recent campaign news, Rick Tyler campaign attacked by two racist organizations, one of which is just the NAACP. This painting has a title to it. As recently as 1965, America was an overwhelmingly white Christian nation. Yeah. And before 1492, it wasn't. The Negro community frowns upon your shenanigans. And so do the rest of us, dude. Thank you, John White, for finding his Facebook page, because this thing is also hilarious. Check it. Make America white again. That's totally what Einstein, the Jewish scientist, wrote. On his personal Facebook page, he has a link to an article he wrote about the KKK and the swastika, and he just does a bad job of condemning either of those parties. So I can't say that that officially connects him to the KKK. What I can say does that is this broadcast with David Duke, the fifth Grand Wizard of the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan who also has a Facebook page where he's just looking so dang swole. And dad gum, man, he is followed by 21,669 people. But you know what I didn't expect to find? That he has a little bit of a problem with the Trump administration. Why? Because Jewish. Because Ivanka and Jared are a Jewish power couple. Goyim. I have a writing assignment and an exam due today, so I'm going to stop now, but honestly, I'm going to leave these open because this is the weirdest rabbit hole I've ever gone down. Thank you for joining me on this adventure.